Welcome to On the Block. I'm Ed Wilkinson, and I'm here today with Father St. Charles Borno, who was born in Haiti. He's now the pastor of St. Teresa of Avila Parish over in Crown Heights. Father St. Charles, welcome. Nice to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Thank yes. you for inviting me. Yeah. Now, I said you were born in Haiti. You were born on the island, and you didn't come here to the United States until uh, you were 27 or so. But were you thinking of becoming a priest when you were in Haiti? Did the thought ever occur to you? In fact, I, uh, my vocation uh, started when I was 10. My mom was a very devout Catholic. Um, she used to truly uh, teach us. She taught us how to be a good Christian, how to be a good Catholic. And so that has helped me with those uh, pilgrimage to discover something good. And that's where I see uh, pe many people, they are praying, they need uh, some, you could feel that there was a need for, for uh, more in terms of how these people uh, were being served. Um, and there was a, a longing. That longing has um, had helped me to at least see that there's something more that I can do. Mm -hmm. And as I continue, I became an altar server in a uh, inner city um, church, Christ the King in Port-au-Prince. And then as I was becoming this kind of, uh, uh, the altar server that was very, very, I was very, what you call, very enthusiastic about my job and then trying to be very active in that church. And then, and from there on, I've seen um, the need continues, the, the, the willingness to enter the priesthood was already there because of the other priests that I've seen working. And then as I grew up, I went to the Salesians uh, Fathers. And it's a technical school or vocational school where I really um, become, I was very much involved in that school. So all the time I that you, learned, you were with the Salesians then in this, are they a big presence on the island? Yes, they are very much involved, bet, have a great presence in the, in the country, yeah. and they are well known. They are really helping a lot, especially with the poor. Now are they missionaries? Or missionaries. From, where and, would they come from? They were established in, in Haiti, and they take care of the poor. This was a very, for me, that was a great experience being there as a, as a student at the, that school. When I graduated from the Salesians, I, I said to myself, I prayed to God, I said, you know, please, I'd like to have three years where I would uh, study for three years. I continue my studies. I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And then now I would get a job. During that time, I would go to school to finish my high school. Mm -hmm. and then also to get a job for three years. And after that, I would go to, to the seminary. Uh -huh. And then thanks be to God, three years, good job. And then at the end of the three years, by the time I had applied for to become a priest, to go into the seminary, mm -hmm. and then that happened. Yeah. Exactly, that happened. So you were, you were a machinist, you were working in a factory down yes. there? Yes, El Marco. Did, how did, you, how did you stay in touch with the church then? Did you, were you well, active in the parish? Oh yes, I was very much involved. I was very serious about church because my mom was there. My mom is the kind of person who really encouraged us to be good Christians. She gave us the faith. She really instilled it in us. So that's one thing we couldn't afford to miss. Being not being involved in church. Haiti is a predominantly Catholic country, isn't it? Yes, so, so indeed. It, would you say you grew up in a Catholic culture then? Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I, so did you enter a seminary then down in Haiti? Yes, I started uh, my uh, first year. I entered the seminary for philosophy, but it was what you call a pre-philosophy pre class. Um, well, that's a discernment. And then with that, I um, stand, I spent that one year there and after that I left and come here. Now why did you come to the United States? Well the first thing I would say is the fact that when you consider when I consider my vocation and when I reflect on it back on I had the first thing that was uh, part of my vocation was to be in the countryside as a priest taking care of the poor um, being a good um, 
a good priest taking care of the poor in the countryside. That's where I saw myself. Then all of a sudden, God probably said, you know what, that's not where I want you to be. I want you to be in the Diocese of Brooklyn <laughs> um, to serve the people in Brooklyn. How did you know about Brooklyn? Well, I had my brother here. Okay. <laughs> my brother lived in, in Brooklyn, so it was fitting for me to just come to Brooklyn and to become a, sure. a seminarian. So you, so you come up here and where do you make the inquiry? Do you go to the parish? Do you go well, to a vocation director? Or? Yes. Um, at that time, uh, Father Bob Welling was the director of um, vocation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and also I was a Sandra Rome. Father Mike Gibbon was there. So these people helped me to get in touch with Bishop Sensorique. Mm -hmm. I was a father century at that time. And then all of a sudden I saw myself being and uh, doing the inquiry, going to um, um, what you call Project Andrew or uh, going there. Father Bob Welling was a very nice uh, priest who would, I would say everybody on my path were great people. And that has helped a lot. So they directed you then toward Douglaston, Douglaston right? Yes. Yeah, and you went there. That's got to be a big cultural change for you, right? Coming from the island of Haiti and coming up here, it's a different group of people you're with. You're in a different culture. How did you make that transition? The thing is that I, I, I guess because of my experience in Haiti, it wasn't e that easy, but it was okay for me to, um, to make that, dis that uh, transition. Because before, when I came, I had already uh, seeking a job. I began to work at a, at a place. It's amazing. When I get a good job at that time, the kind of pay that I was going to get, I remember this. I had just gotten that job during the summer. And then that's when they called me. Did you have second thoughts? Or nope, maybe? nope. I was very well focused on, on, on my vocation. By this time, I was sure that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. well, I was sure that I wanted to be a priest. Mm -hmm. And then I was willing to whatever, making sacrifice for that. Okay. But thanks be to God, I had my brother also to help me. Sure, sure. So that was, um, that had made it a little bit more, much easier for me. I want to talk about your education, seminary education when we come back. But right now we're going to take a quick break. We're here on the block, stay with us. Welcome back to On the Block. I'm Ed Wilkinson, talking today with Father St. Charles Borno. Now we were talking about your uh, transition up to the United States from Haiti, and uh, now you joined the seminary here. That's gotta be tough. I mean, you got some kind of a language uh, barrier first, right? You have to yes. learn English, and you have to take your classes in English. That's gotta be tough for uh, a young person. Indeed, it was <laughs> tough, because uh, our my English was bad, <laughs> and um, but at the same time, I was very confident to tell you the truth. I entered the seminary with a sense that I'm gonna be a priest. And then that it will require some sacrifice on my part. When I was accepted, they welcomed me very well and yeah. I, was, I, was, I felt good. Were there other Haitian men in the seminary system at that time? Well, no. At that time, I was alone. By the time Father Miguel was already um, ordained in 1993, and then um, Father Dumont, that was way back, 1980s. It's a little noisy here because we seem to be in a flight pattern, but we're gonna continue on, so just bear with us a little bit. So um, now I entered, I was the only one and as a Haitian, and then um, I, I begin to, I begin the program. One thing that was um, important is that the seminary, I couldn't enter St. John's right away. So the seminary sent us to take uh, classes. There was one semester that I spent there without taking any classes. It says just being in the seminary. Well, that had given me some confidence too, knowing the place and then sure. being able to study by, uh, by myself. Sure. So by the time I was, uh, the semester was over, um, in December or in January, we started uh, a program, the program to learn English. Uh -huh. And then by the time, my classmates are already done with their first year. Mm -hmm. And that's when I'm gonna enter my really first year in, in college. Mm -hmm. But I was able to, to work hard and to catch up on mm -hmm. with them. It didn't discourage you at all from nope. your vocation? You were nope. that set in your vocation? Well, at times it had become a little bit difficult, but one thing I know from my mom is that she said to us always, 
um, discouragement is not really Christian. Okay? My mom was like a theologian. She, well, yes, indeed. She taught us so much about the church, about God. Did you have other siblings, other brothers and sisters? Yes, indeed. Yeah. You'll be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I have nine wow. siblings, uh -huh. and they are all boys. Oh, my so goodness. So we are 10. And are you the only voca a religious vocation? Yes. Did they, did, what did they think about that? Did they encourage you or did oh, they think you were crazy? I know, no, <laughs> no, no. Indeed, when I was at, with the Salesians, um, my brother, my older brother, well, um, he, um, he was the first one to consider the Salesians. And all of a sudden he left. And then since that was already part of my, my, my being to be, to consider the vocation to the priesthood, I was able to um, continue. Indeed, when I was in the seminary in Douglaston, it was uh, at times difficult, especially when I was a, when I spent that year where I didn't have much, I didn't know where I was in terms of uh, my education. But there was the hope, the hope was always there that uh, next year, I'm gonna enter St. John's. It's a challenge, you know, with classmates and, and uh, but there was a system in Douglas and that was very good in terms of the priests were so gentle. I can't remember, Monsignor King, Father Caserta, and um, Bishop Cisneros, all these uh, people, the teachers, the Monsignor Dietz, all these people are the ones who really kept us going even in those very difficult times. And also, I was, uh, while I was in the seminary, I was already uh, in much involved in um, St. Jerome. When I have too much to do in the seminary, I would go back to St. Jerome, and that had given me the opportunity to speak with Bishop Zanzarek and ask him if I could uh, form a singing group. And um, that singing group is Troupe Eclat. They're still around today. Yes, yeah. they are very, yeah. they're doing very well. Yes. So that group was founded in 19, June 24th, uh -huh. 1995. And you were right there in the beginning. Huh? Well, I did it. You I did created it. it. I put it together. And then with the support of the parishioners and a lot of young people, just like you see it today, even more young people were part of that group. So that had given me courage to, to continue. And then the people also helped me. They supported me. They helped me um, in so many ways. And I would say that had been a great support for me. How so. important was Bishop Sansarik to you? Because it seems to me that there, there are so many vocations from the Haitian community, and he always seems to have his hand in it somewhere. Well, Bishop um, Sensorik is very, is a kind person. I think he has a vision uh, and he encourages vocation. So that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think um, my meeting Bishop uh, Sensorik has become, uh, has has done a great deal in my vocation mm -hmm. in terms of how, when things were tough financially, he was able to support mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And um, uh, spiritually, mm -hmm. and uh, in a way, he was very much involved in the life of the seminarians. He has sure. always been very supportive of the vocation mm -hmm. to the priesthood. Then you went out to Huntington and you studied theology out there. and. In the middle of that study, you had to go for a pastoral year, right? Yes. And you went out to Far Rockaway? Far Rockaway and St. Mary's Star of the Sea. Star of the Sea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that a Haitian community out there, or was it that it was a, more of a mixed community? Yes. Right? Uh, the Haitian community there is uh, very small. Um, when I was there, I tried to gather them, um, the, 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 those who were willing to, to be part of the Haitian community. and. Um, well, I think they were okay, but there's still a group there that is um, striving to to um, to do whatever they can do. Um, I think they are there. Not recently, last uh, January, I went and celebrated mass for them. There was a good a, a good group. Now, when you were ordained in 2004, that was the first ordination class for Bishop De Marzio, right? He had yes. just become the bishop. Yes, indeed. So that's got to be special for him and for you to have the new bishop or Exactly, Daniel, I think. exactly. So he was, uh, we were his first class, ordination class, and then um, 
he uh, really helped us and I can remember um, the retreat he gave us before the, the, ordin the day of ordination and um, we, um, we were doing very well and I think the bishop had really helped us. He has some kind of, uh, a, he has an influence on us, you know, to really knowing that uh, the bishop, uh, we were his first class. That was, a, that was a good thing. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break right now and we're coming right back with more from Father St. Charles Borno. Welcome back to On the Block. I'm Ed, this is Father St. Charles, and we've been talking about your, uh, your trip to the priesthood and, and now you are a priest and you have been for 13 years, as you said. Your first assignment was to? Uh, a leader of miracles, mm -hmm. where I spent already, I had already spent a year as a deacon and uh, during that year, I learned uh, a good amount of things from, from Father Frank Hughes. I was with him. And then that parish has a great influence on me and my priesthood. I would say that um, St. Mary's Star of the Sea, I have to go back a little bit. St. Mary's Star of the Sea gave me the, my foundation as a, as a seminarian and a priest um, in terms of preaching, because Father Sean Ogle had given me the opportunity to preach twice a month. And then, and then after that, going to Our Lady of Miracles, I was able to preach as a deacon. And then when I was ordained, they assigned me back again to St. Mary's of this, uh, to Our Lady of Miracles in Canarsie. So that had given me uh, the great joy. That was a great beginning for me as a priest. So what is the state of the Haitian community here in the diocese now? I mean, many came here after the earthquake back mm -hmm. in 2010, and they were living here on temporary visas, really, yes. and it just got extended. But uh, we have very many. Uh, is there any number that we can give to how many Haitians are in our diocese? I really, I really can't say. But um, because even if the, the number were to be maybe 80,000, 100,000, 200,000. Um, I think what is very um, telling is the fact that the Haitians continue to be a very religious group in the Diocese of Brooklyn. Um, what do they bring to, to the greater community? I mean, what are the gifts that bring, and why is the diocese richer? Because we have a Haitian community here. Well, the Haitians are hardworking people. They go to church, and then they do, um, they do, they take their faith seriously. It's not a group that will stay at home. Of course, there are some people who do not go to church, but at the same time, um, they are much involved in church. They go to church on Sundays, and at times you won't see them at the Haitian mass, but they go to English mass. One blessing that the Haitians have is that we can speak, we can go to any mass. We'll still understand the mass. We can take Latin, we can take a Spanish mass, we can go to an English mass and then and, a and, uh, Creole French. And I think Haitians can even speak Italian. Uh, so so um, I think um, that has given, it's a rich, it's very rich for us. Um, that would help the diocese. It's very rich for the diocese with the Haitians being, um, that are really working hard in the diocese. And the liturgies seem to be lively. Ah, yes, yeah, yes, I mean, I've been yes, to yes, Haitians indeed. and the music is great and, and I mean, they love to sing. Yes, if you want to really have a great, great um, celebration of the Haitian mass, come to St. Teresa of Avila, 9 a.m. Mm. on Sundays. And then you go to a lot, a lot of other uh, church Haitian where parishes where there are Haitians, they are really, um, they are really, those masses are really uh, beautiful, beautiful. And of course, um, that's how we worship. At times it takes a little bit more time, but for us Sunday, and we learn that Sunday is the day of the Lord. We spend time in church and, and really worship the yeah. Lord. What's happening back in Haiti itself? I mean. Uh, in 2010, we had that disastrous earthquake, and it doesn't seem to be a lot of progress being made down there. Yeah, I think the way we started was, well, it's like a, the foundation, the way after the earthquake, uh, maybe there was a lack of leadership that really did not capitalize on even its, uh, its uh, 
bad things that happen, but you could use that to, to make progress. Mm -hmm. And from my, my understanding is that when I went to Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake, I felt, I already saw that there was not much being done. Mm -hmm. From February, from January 12th to August when I went to Haiti, mm -hmm. I could have seen much more being done, but I didn't see And it seems seven years later, it seems not much uh, is, is being done. But at the same time, something is going on. They are, they are working, they are making some progress. Maybe at a very slow pace, but it's still- well, We have a group here in this diocese that's been helping out called From Here to Haiti. Yes. Uh, uh, are you involved with them? Uh, um, they're making we, some strides in trying to rebuild churches. Yes, now. we. Uh, I'm well aware since I'm the director of the Haitian Apostolate, so that has given me an opportunity to speak with um, um, the Patricia and um, and also some other people who are involved. But there are many other um, groups that are helping in Haiti. Even um, there are schools. There are. Uh, people who are supporting in so, so many ways. So um, right now, Haiti has so many um, organizations trying to help. Yeah. I really don't know how much they are able to help. Yeah. So, but we are hoping that uh, what they are doing is gonna bring some fruit. Here in this diocese, we have more than 30 Haitian priests, yep. you know, and sometimes that's a problem with uh, uh, immigrant communities, they don't bring their own priests. But from Haiti, it's been a very fertile ground for vocations. Why would you say that is? It is because, um, as I said, the faith is strong in Haiti. And then um, also, um, the ground in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Diocese, is, is, is welcoming. It's more mm -hmm. welcoming than, I'm not saying that the other places are not welcoming, mm -hmm. but I think the Dice of Brooklyn is a very welcoming place. Last, last question, if a young Haitian uh, man came to you today and said, I'm thinking about becoming a priest, what, would you, what advice would you give him? Well, he has to first, um, during the inquiry, he has come to me. And right now we do have few of them that are coming and ask about uh, vocation. Um, we do encourage them to see the vocation director and then um, they have the process, how they encourage the, the, the young people who are considering vocation to the priesthood. They have a process, they go to Project Andrew, they meet with the bishop, they go to other activities that the vocation um, office is doing. So that would be the first step. And, the, and from there on, uh, the diocese, well, the director of vocation will take care. Very strong vocation, a great vocation story. Father St. Charles, thanks so much for being with us today. And thank all of you for watching On the Block today. I'm Ed Wilkinson. We'll see you next time.